Kochi surfaces in uh, canonical gravity. He has looked also at these U1 models developed by Madhavan, Varadarajan, and Cassie Tomlin. And today he will be talking about uh, elementary relational obs observables with quantum reference frames. Thank so, you. Please. Um, I was about to say something to, uh, to congratulate <laughs> Jurek, but he's <laughs> not here, so, I, so maybe I'll do it in, in, the, in the end. So today, can you hear me? Is this working? Yes. Okay, so uh, today, actually the work I'm presenting here is about extracting exact Schrodinger dynamics from uh, canonical quantum gravity theory governed by a uh, quantum constraint kernel projector P. And so such theory has a kinematic Hubert space that represents the uh, unconstrained ADM phase space, which we call K, in which the uh, momentum and scalar constraints are quantized and to be imposed. So the, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, is the laser working? This one, oh, okay. So yes, so this projector formally is just the delta function of the quantum constraints, which I will call the rigging map. Now, this rigging map uh, serves as a con conceptual central object for such theories over a wide range of regime. From the uh, perturbative effective theories in the low energy scales to non-perturbative fundamental theory in Planck scale. For the effective theory, for example, we have the traditional um, quantum geometrical dynamics that uses the quantum field theory approach to describe the quantum fluctuation of the universe around a given space-time background. For fundamental theory, I would here uh, refer to loop quantum gravity as, a, as an example. So for the effective theory, the rigging map elements are computed using the fedaya popov path integral using uh, the action of general relativity. And here, the underlying constraint, as, as well as the path integral itself, is an effective object that should be viewed under renormalization to a low energy scale. Well, in the fundamental theory, actually, what we have in loop quantum gravity is a remarkable result that upon the structure of quantum geometry described by spin network states, we are able to de uh, define the constraint operators and the rigging map operator rigorously as a fundamental object. Now, about the dynamics, what happens in the effective theory is that uh, in the endpoint functions generated by the path integral, the field operators naturally acquires the notion of effective local observables by referring to the background space-time and the perturbation gauge specified in the path integral. While in the fundamental theory, um, since we are in the prescription of non-perturbative quantum geometry that is abstract without the background, the construction of the fundamental local observables is much more challenging and it remains a major challenge for the, the full theory. So here I'm going to uh, take the point of view that uh, suppose we have a, an effective theory with the path for the path, path integral, integral that uh, which when you follow the uh, renormalization flow in the Planck scale limit, let's suppose that it really recovers the uh, matrix element of the rigging, uh, fundamental rigging map, map operators, um, then what do we expect of the, of, of the such, uh, so, so, so we may then expect under the same renormalization flow, the effective local observables uh, might actually give rise in the Planck scale a fundamental notion of local observables in the fundamental theory. And since we can compute, define and compute the, everything about the effective local observables in the effective theory, then we should expect 
such emergent uh, fundamental local observables in the fundamental theory to be definable and, ex and, and computable using just the uh, rigging map elements. So, the, the, the Exactly, exactly. Here, the X uh, represents uh, the per perturbation state in, in the QFT. And here, the X and here for loop quantum gravity are, are represents the degrees of freedom in spin aggregate state. So because of that, it's not obvious to me that knowing something there, we can do something here. Yes, so, so, so it, it, it is highly non-trivial. But I'm taking the assumption that through a um, renormalization flow, we can actually go from the Fadal Pop of path integral to the matrix elements of, of the fundamental rigging map elements. So, so this is the thing we are trying to do here, is to try to define and compute uh, the uh, local observables in the fundamental theory using only the rigging map elements. Okay, so, so for, to define the observables, it is of course good to have a physical Hilbert space of physical state um, first so for us to define the observables in. Now, uh, let's assume that we have such rigging map uh, operator that has the usual expected property that it has the uh, matrix elements being Hermitian and diagonally non-negative, then uh, the refined algebraic quantization coined by Marov and others tells us that for such a rigging map operator, there's naturally a physical Hilbert space, which as a vector space is simply the image of the, uh, of the rigging map. So every state in the kinematic, in the physical Hilbert space will then be annihilated by the constraint operator. And here I'll use the notation of uh, uh, lowercase psi one cat being mapped to the physical state of uppercase psi one with a round bracket, with a round cat. Um, and further, the, the crucial thing here is that the the rigging map elements between two kinematic states, psi one and psi two, is then defined as the physical inner product between the corresponding physical states. So this is the Huber's, physical Hubert space. Uh, we are going to build our ob observables in. And here from this the form of the inner product, it is already suggested that if we have, if we find uh, physical observables in the physical Hilbert space, then the propagation described by such observables will be in the form of physical inner product, uh, physical inner products in, in physical Hilbert space. And this expression tells us that it should be expressible in terms of a certain uh, function of the rigging map elements. And that's make this concrete by actually constructing such observables. So, um, okay, so we want local observables. So I will follow the prevailing relational description that is commonly accepted in general relativity. And that means the starting point of my construction, of the construction of observables uh, would involve, first, splitting the kinematic Hilbert space into two commuting sectors with the dynamical sector Xi uh, here and, and the reference sector X mu. So the, the evolution of the dynamical sector should be described in relation to the uh, reference sector. And just as in the classical theory, the full specification of space-time coordinate will be, will be done by choosing a set of quantum uh, reference fields, T mu, constructed from the reference sector, and the specification of a one-parameter family of eigenvalues 
for the quantum reference fields, such that for each moment t, there corresponds uh, kt, which is, uh, which is the um, uh, eigenspace of the quantum reference uh, field with the assigned instantaneous value, t mu of t, while this space would have the full uh, dynamical degrees of freedom, xi here. Now, but what we really want to do here is to construct the physical observables that, has, as, that takes the form xi of t and p of t, which carries the meaning of uh, the value of xi and pi at the moment t when the reference field takes the value t mu of t. And so if we think of the orthonormal basis for such an observable xi of t, we know that at least it should span a, a subspace of the physical Hilbert space, which we call HT. Now, how do we go on? We know that we should invoke the rigging map to achieve our goal um, to express the, uh, the observables uh, using the rigging map matrix elements. So, what do we expect? Actually, we do expect the, this HT to be the image of the rigging map image of the KT we just talked about. Indeed, because KT has the uh, assigned background field value and it has the uh, degrees of freedom in XI. At this point, uh, it's important to note that the rigging map, when acting on the full uh, physical Hubert, uh, uh, kinematic Hubert space is vastly degenerate. Uh, it maps any two gauge equivalent kinematic states to the same physical state. And here, by restricting uh, this, uh, by looking at uh, this KT, which has, uh, by restricting to, to KT, which satisfy a gauge condition of T mu equals to T mu of T, we expect all such gauge, we, we would need to request all such uh, a gauge redundancy has been, uh, has, has been removed in KT, such that the two spaces KT and HT becomes one-to-one -one on the rigging map with the well-defined uh, map, which I call pi T here. Now, when this happens, we could then find, uh, okay, so when this happens, then we can define this orthonormal basis xi of t to be the Ricci map image of the naive corresponding orthonormal basis here, xi t mu of t, corrected by an operator lambda t, which preserves kt, okay? So what we have here, when this picture is established, we have, if we look at the composition of lambda t here, MP and the rigging map, we have a map that maps an orthonormal basis here in KT to an orthonormal basis here in HT. And this gives us a um, Hubert space isometry between KT and HT. And this isometry will elevate the, uh, uh, the conjugate pair of self-adjoint operators, xi and pi, inside of kt to the corresponding uh, uh, conjugate pair of, of self-adjoint operators in ht, uh, which, I call, which is exactly the xi of t, pi of t here. And the two, operate, two sets of operators will have the, exactly the same uh, quantum algebra and the spectrum. So, so we have defined now the relational observables in, in, in the subspace of physical Hilbert space uh, uh, using the rigging map. But is there a constructive way of knowing what lambda 
This is the next step I'm going to specify. So, so now, can we compute? Uh, okay, so can we compute the evolution described by such relational observables uh, using only rigging map elements? <laughs> the answer is yes. Uh, first of all, let me specify the form of lambda t I just introduced. And it is actually given by the rigging map sandwiched by the t operator to the power of negative one half, where the t operator is simply just a projection operator into kt. So with this form, OK, so, so uh, just, just as a sideline, why particularly this lambda t, what, why particularly we choose this form of lambda t? This is because that um, uh, it could be shown that this lambda t is a quantum representation of the square root of the Fadea Popov determinant uh, in the in in the path in the growth. So so what happens when it applies to the kernel? Oh, so, so, so um, if the choice of uh, t mu of t is a good gauge fixing, then this lambda t as an operator in kt should not have any kernel. It should be non-degenerate. Um, so, so I'll get back to that later. So, now with this lambda t, um, we can write. We can now consider the uh, the re, re, our relational observables x i at t one and x i at t two, and we can compute the the physical inner product between their respective uh, eigenbasis elements. So it will be given according to the the definition of the physical in the product, it will be given by the rigging map elements between their respective uh, kinematic gauge fix representatives in KT2 and in KT1 here, which are just uh, their naive uh, uh, corresponding eigenbasis corrected by lambda 2 and lambda 1. So as you can see here, uh, every th here the all the operators inside are just rigging map operators and projectors into either KT1 or KT2. So as a result, if we think of the right-hand side here as a square matrix labeled by T2 and T1 with the matrix elements uh, running over Xi and Xi prime, then we have the following result. This matrix labeled by T2 and T1 is given by this form, which is in terms of the relevant square matrices of rigging map, which are just given by restricting the rigging map to between two moments of time. Okay, so everything here can be computed just uh, uh, by uh, evaluating the relevant elements of rigging map. So this is to say, in a practical case, when, whenever we, uh, we have chosen, uh, the, we, have we have completed uh, the specification of the reference field, then we can go on and just compute the co corresponding relevant elements of the rigging map, and using this formula to obtain the, uh, the G, T1, T2 matrices, uh, over a variety of values for T1 and T2. Now, concerning the result, we might get divergences. So if we get divergences at a certain moment of time, and that means at that moment of time, at, at, at that T value, the, the specification T mu of T actually fails to gauge fix. And, and that re uh, remaining uh, gauge redundancy in, the, in, in, this, in that KT actually leads uh, the lambda T to diverge.
But if we do get convergent results for these variety of moments, then that means the result we get indeed gives uh, this quantity uh, describing which is, which, which is uh, in terms of our well-defined uh, fundamental local observables. If further, this matrix is unitary, what does it mean? Then it means that uh, the, the domain for our local uh, relational observables at different t values are actually, um, are actually identical to a time-independent Heisenberg state domain, D, here, from which each state, psi, could be expanded using uh, the eigenbasis of our uh, relational observables at different time, leading to a Schrodinger, evolving Schrodinger uh, wave function propagated by this G T2 T1 as a propagator. <clears throat> it's not guaranteed to, to converge. No, but, but what does it mean? Oh, if, if it converges, that means, what that means is lambda t converges. And, and for lambda t to converge, we need uh, th this matrix inside to be non-degenerate. And, and it being non-degenerate, this matrix being non-degenerate implies that uh, the rigging map restricted to KT is non-degenerate. And that implies that the, the, the map between KT and the, the image HT is one to one. By convergence, you, you mean it is well defined? Yeah, yeah. So, um, okay, so now we have this, uh, ob this relational observables defined in the physical Hilbert space, uh, which is constructed using rigging map and could be computed using only the relevant elements of rigging map. <laughs> I will now give two applications, which are my current ongoing project. The first one is on um, the uh, quantum cosmic perturbation on um, FRW loop quantum cosmo cosmological model. So we've, we've uh, heard Thomas talk in the morning, which covers this model in the more general setting. Uh, so here I just briefly remind you a little bit on, on what it's about. So the kinematic Hubert space of this model uh, is a product between the, the kinematic Hubert space of the homogeneous sector and the kinematic Hubert space of the, uh, of the cosmic perturbation. Now, the, the idea behind this is that the, the FRW sector uh, being treated with the loop quantization should capture the quantum geometric effect such as the initial singularity resolution and provide uh, the signature loop quantum gravitational correction to the evolution of the perturbations. Now, this, these models have drawn a lot of attention. And, and the only constraint to be imposed on the, this kinematic Hubert space at the quantum level is just the, the quantized homogeneous mode of the scale constraint containing uh, the the FRW loop quantum cosmolo cosmology scalar constraint 
and uh, a term uh, providing the, the inflaton potential to the single scalar field, matter scalar field we introduce in the model. So these two terms will act on the FRW part. And the third term will contain the, the uh, 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 coupling between the cosmic perturbation and the homogeneous uh, quantum geometry. Now, uh, so the main treatment of this model so far has been, as Thomas has mentioned, uh, has been under this test field approximation, which ignores the back reaction from the uh, from the from the cosmic perturbation to the homogeneous sector. So in this way, the loop quantum cosmology becomes a fixed background for us to extract the evolution of the cosmic perturbation. Now, uh, with so with the very interesting results obtained this way, uh, uh, which includes the enhancement of the uh, non-Gaussianity non in the primordial perturbations, it is desirable to, and I completely agree that the next crucial step is to go beyond the test field approximation to include the, the back reaction. Um, um, and here, of course, uh, uh, Thomas had shown us that we can use the, the space adiabatic perturbation theory uh, to this model to extract to perform term by term perturbation calculations, including the back reaction. And, and here, uh, my, for my personal project, I would like to try to apply uh, the, 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 the observables I'm proposing here. So the task here will be actually constructing from a proper form of scalar constraint operator, a computable rigging map P here. So, once we could have that, we, we can, uh, for the dynamics, we can, for example, specify the reference field to be our matter scalar field. And we, ju we can just compute the relevant elements uh, between the different KTs with the different instantaneous uh, value for the scalar field. Then we can just, with, so these elements could be then plugged into our formula, which I just, which I've shown you before. Then it, sh it will give us, it would give us the uh, Schrodinger theory describing uh, the, the gravity sector, including the, the homogeneous and the perturbation sectors. And because all of the, the four quantum interactions, including the back reactions, are really right inside of this scalar constraint here. So this evolution will contain the four quantum interactions and back reactions. And so we can use, the hope is that we can use this result to study the, the further details of non gaussianity in the perturbation, specifically uh, when we go to the higher order perturbation. Um, another thing I think that is important is to study with, uh, to study the transplanting correction to the uh, perturbations. That is to study the evolution of the cosmic perturbations that are, that has the, that have the Planckian wavelength near the onset of inflation. And those modes should receive, could receive strong correction from the quantum geometry. And these effects, I think, might be even completely missing if we don't consider the back reactions. So this is another thing I would like to see. OK. Um, so the second model I would be exploring 
is the symmetrically symmetric, uh, spherically symmetric loop quantum gravity describing spatial space time. Now, um, so under spherical symmetry reduction, um, the canonical data will be dependent only on the spatial radius coordinate, which I call x. And therefore, um, the loop, quantum uh, loop quantization of such reduced model leads to a kinematic Hilbert space, k, spanned by the reduced spin network states, which are labeled by uh, a graph, gamma, that's lying inside of the radius, uh, one-dimensional radius space, x, with edges connected to the vertices, and also the coloring of the of the graph, uh, to, um, which tells us about the quanta, gravitational quanta, k and j, uh, that describe the spherical quantum geometry, and also the matter quanta that describe the two massless field, phi 1, 2, and one massive field, psi, I introduced for the model. And such uh, type of models are also have, uh, have also been widely studied with the, with the uh, quantized reduced scalar and momentum constraints to be imposed on the vertices of the state. Now, the usual treatment of such model is to um, restrict the whole construction to either the interior or exterior of a, uh, of a pre-existing event horizon. And such restriction, and by using the, the additional symmetry of this region, the, the quantum constraints can be further re, uh, simplified, leading to well-controlled uh, equa uh, effective equation of motions then what we can do is then piece together these regional uh, uh, dynamics to give uh, the evolution of the whole space-time. Now, with all the uh, remarkable results, including the possibility of the uh, black hole uh, uh, singularity resolution into a white hole, we are also motivated to, to find a way to compute the dynamics of the full Cauchy surface in the deep quantum level without assuming the pre-existing pre uh, horizon. Now, my approach also offers such a possibility. And the task here is, again, to, to construct uh, the quantum constraints such that it gives a computable rigging map. Um, with that, we can then, for example, choose the two massless scalar field to be our reference fields and to compute the relevant elements between the different KTs with the assigned value for, for the quanta of the massless, two massless fields. With these uh, relevant elements, we could obtain a Schrodinger theory that uh, describing the evolution of gravity and the massive scalar field. And this will include the full interaction over the full Cauchy surface. Now, my goal here will be to study uh, if we have um, the case with very massive scalar field uh, numerically uh, to see if we can uh, find, we can actually observe uh, loop quantum gravitational collapse from such calculation. And also to study the, 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 the fate of the black hole, uh, black hole singularity as an integrate part of the fully dynamical space time. So I think I will stop here. This is all. You wanted to do something because Yurik was over. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so, so, yes. So I, I want to say that being here really, uh, being here really 
being here over again uh, reminds me of the good memories. Like over two years ago, when I was working here as a postdoc in Eurex Group, and, and so it goes without saying that I learned a great deal collaborating with him from his uh, deeply mathematical insight. And uh, moreover, I also had the chance to sharpen my sense of humor uh, <laughs> and, and become, actually, in the end, I, be be become, uh, in the end, I became a core audience to his jokes and, and story. What about my invectives? <laughs> hmm? <laughs> what about the, invec the Polish invectives? <laughs> <laughs> That too. <laughs> well, well, and uh, but most of all, I I have become uh, the beneficiary of uh, to a great wealth of his uh, support, his very kind support, and unassuming and warm friendship. So here I, I want to be being very grateful to all of those. I want to wish you, Yurik, uh, on this birthday the best health and happiness uh, together with Ella. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So are there questions or comments?